It's a city with deep roots, enriched in cultural history, a community with an abundance of spirit, a destination that folk art and crafts enthusiasts flock to. Welcome to Berea, where art's alive. Nestled on the border of the Cumberland Plateau, Berea is one of the fastest growing towns in Kentucky, and for good reason. The community boldly proclaims its liberal arts ideology, and uniquely, the collective creativity also represents the roots of the region. In the mid-18th century, few footsteps had traversed this land, and certainly none had made as significant an imprint as one distinctive explorer. During the spring of 1775, Daniel Boone marked trails for other pioneers to follow, the great movement west into the heartland of America. The Western expansion began with Daniel Boone. Bell Jackson is a longtime Berea resident and well-respected local historian. People say it began in St. Louis, that kind of jumping off point. But without Boone and the people who followed him, we would have been constrained by the, the mountain landscape. He followed the trails that had been there hundreds of years before and he would mark them or blaze the trail. A blaze literally was the mark a hatchet would make on a tree. So he would hatch it down and that would be a blaze to be followed. And after many years of those paths being followed, this region, at the time referred to as the Glade, was settled by a man named Cassius Marcellus Clay and... There's a fiery young circuit preacher named John G. Fee and Clay decided to give him a piece of property in a glade area that eventually became the city of Berea. So with the help of Cassius Clay, John G. Fee brought together a group of like-minded people who said, we're gonna start a small school here. Fee's philosophy of anti-caste is just that. All people are equal. All people have needs for things to just prosper as humans, uh, clean air, uh, good food, uh, but also education. And though John G. Fee's ideals faced persecution, they persevered through the challenges of the American Civil War. However, at the end of the war, the country was still deeply mired in division. And that was a time, of course, when segregation was coming forward. So the college needed a, a significant new mission. And that new mission at that time was to really focus on the region of Appalachia. It was in that focus that President Frost developed uh, a, a important mission for the college, serving highly disadvantaged students who otherwise wouldn't be able to go to college. The same president, President Frost, also made sure that every student could work for the college. He had found that most students, even paying just a little bit of tuition, were not able to complete their degree in continuous four years of study. So his idea was, why don't we let every student work for the college? We should be able to run more efficiently then and eliminate that need for students to go away. We have since made that labor program, we call it, an integral part of our education, every single one of our students works, both to help with tuition costs, but also uh, for their room and board costs. So a typical student coming to Berea College gets, first of all, a full tuition scholarship from us. No student pays any tuition here, but also that labor augmentation of their income means that they can typically graduate without uh, owing any money. Berea has stayed with that basic mission of inclusively educating, building a community, black and white, men and women, now all races, living and learning together. Uh, and we've always emphasized that piece that says, uh, first of all, we don't want to be sectarian, we want to be inclusive, and secondly, we don't want money to be the reason that you are not going to school. 